Hello guys and welcome back to Sins Gaming Channel. My name is Michael. Today we have a new game. Well, a new second game of an old game that I quite liked. Railway Empire 2. So I will just play through the tutorials in one go. Uh, I will not be on my computer so I won't speak just now because I'm still, have, still suffering from my let's call it back injury. So yeah, enjoy. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Greetings. I've been expecting you. I'm Lawrence Vanderswag and I want to help you find your way in the world of railways. I'll tell you everything you need to know to set up a successful transport company. Of course, if you want to make money transporting passengers, mail and freight, you need to understand where the need for new railway lines is greatest. This is, for example, where goods are produced. Have a look at the map. Move the map in all directions and change the zoom level. And now turn the camera in all directions. Very well. Now take a closer look at the area around the two cities, San Francisco and Sacramento. Cities and rural businesses are crucial to the transportation business. Cities produce factory goods, mail and travelers. There is a need for transportation to other cities for these goods. Farms in the countryside produce basic goods and raw materials, which are also needed by cities. As long as there are no railroads, all goods must be transported by a simple rural road. But these transports do not cover long distances, are tedious and slow. Therefore, the transport volume is not very high. Through the railroad, the old transport routes can be replaced. In addition, cities and farms that were previously too far apart can be connected. Improving goods supply ensures that cities grow. Rural businesses in the countryside also grow because they can sell more goods. Take a closer look at Sacramento. Under the name, you can see the size of the city. Move your focus to the city and you'll see what it currently produces for export to other cities. Sacramento has a steady supply of passengers, mail, and export goods every day, some of which is destined for San Francisco. San Francisco, in turn, has goods for Sacramento. Build a rail link between the two cities to take these shipments. First, construct a railroad station in Sacramento. Open the building construction to select it then move it to a valid location within the Sacramento City region. It's best to rotate it so that the tracks face San Francisco. By the way, each station can be expanded after construction with up to two additional buildings and seven tracks. However, certain buildings like factories can get in the way of expanding the tracks. Therefore, do not build the station too close to these buildings. Now build the second station in San Francisco. Move the station to a valid position within the city borders and turn it preferably to the southeast so that you can get well around the bay in the next step. Very good. And now establish a track connection between the two cities. To do this, open the track construction mode and select the first station track at both stations in turn. The stations will then be connected and the entire track will be shown to you as a preview which you can still modify. The preview track follows the shortest path. However, this is not always possible and often not the cheapest solution. Especially tunnels and bridges can be very expensive. In the overview, you can see how the track construction costs are composed. To change the course of a proposed track, you can insert track points and then move them. Now set such a track point once by selecting the track.
Now optimize the cost of the track with the help of track points. Please note that length, slopes, as well as tight curves will have a negative effect on the travel time of your trains. Then confirm the construction. Very good. The track has been built and can be used immediately. Now set up a rail line. Now add your stations to the rail line by selecting them one by one. It's enough if the rail line has two stations. Now assign the type of locomotive to the train line which all tra trains should use. At the moment, you have only one locomotive to choose from. Now specify how many trains should run on the rail line. To start off, one train is enough. The display tells you how many trains are currently active and how many you have requested. For each train, you have to pay the cost of purchasing the locomotive. Now confirm this cost. Fantastic! The train is now immediately deployed and will soon be on its way. Now close the edit mode to see the rail line in action. Zoom in on the train and watch it load. The train is loading goods, passengers, and mail destined for the other city. Let's wait until the train reaches the other city. By the way, you can increase the gameplay speed at any time. Also, the game runs faster when you zoom out. The train has arrived and is being unloaded. The numbers rising above the train are the transport revenue. This is the most important source of revenue for your company. However, each train also generates personnel and maintenance costs, but more on that later. Keep watching for a bit and this tutorial will end. Hello! In this lesson, I want to give you some additional information about track construction. You already know the basics, but I have a few important tips. First, consider the cattle farm with the road connection to Sacramento. The road tells us that the farm can deliver goods to the city, in this case, livestock to the meat industry. But transportation by roads is slow and limited. Sacramento could produce more meat if the city received more livestock. Therefore, you are now to establish a railroad connection between the cattle farm and Sacramento. In order for a rural business to use a station, the station must be set up nearby. This is indicated to you by a line from the farm to the station. Very good. And now build the track between the new station and the station in Sacramento. Don't use the first two station tracks in Sacramento though, because we still need them for the connection to San Francisco.
build the track, I want to explain how you can influence the height of a track. To do this, insert a track point on the track and change its height. You will see the controls at the bottom of the screen when you move the focus over the track point. With the height of a track point, you can influence tunnels, bridges and slopes. Now, optimize the track so that no tunnels or bridges are needed and the track has a length of less than 250 kilometers or 160 miles. Then, confirm the track construction. Excellent! Now, set up a rail line between the cattle operation and Sacramento. To do this, create a new rail line between the two stations, select a locomotive and a train, and confirm the cost. That done, the rail line can begin service. But suppose the demand for cattle becomes so great that one train on this line is not enough then you would have to add another train. This is not possible at the moment because there are no parallel tracks. Therefore, you should now build a side track and define directions of travel so that several trains can operate between the cattle farm and Sacramento. Open the track build mode again. Now select the track at the marked position to insert a switch. Now it gets tricky. You have to lay the new track as a parallel track to the existing one. Parallel tracks are much cheaper and offer many advantages. Move your cursor to the marked position and make sure that the parallel track symbol appears on the cursor. Then confirm the position. Very good. Now the track will continue to be built as a parallel track. Now select the last position for your side track near the cattle farm. You will see the complete track with two switches as a preview. Then confirm the construction and pay for this track. Now you have to set directions for the two parallel tracks. Otherwise, your trains will always choose the shortest way and not use the side track. Now open the direction mode and select both tracks several times so that they receive different directions. Very good! Now your trains can go one way and return the other. Why don't you zoom in close to one of the new turnouts and take a look at the signals that were automatically created by the turnouts and the direction of travel. These signals define directions of travel and tell trains where to stop if the track section in front of them is already occupied or reserved. But at the moment, you don't need a second train on this route because your rail line can already transport much more livestock than the previous rural road. This allows the meat industry in Sacramento to produce more meat, which also benefits your rail line to San Francisco. Now, let's take a closer look at this rail line. Open the Sacramento City dialog by selecting the Sacramento City borders. You can select anything except special buildings. 
Important information about the city is shown here. At the top, the citizens of the city are displayed. Below that is how many wagons of goods the citizens and the industries in the city could consume and how well this demand is currently covered. Furthermore, the current train usage is shown for freight, passengers and mail. Below that, it shows how many passengers and how much mail are currently waiting for transport and how much is added per week. It is important to note here, these express goods do not wait forever. For example, after a few days of waiting, travelers will gradually abandon their journey or look for another way. The same is true for mail. So if you want to transport as many express goods to San Francisco as possible, a train should leave Sacramento every five to 10 days. However, your existing rail line only has one train and only reaches Sacramento every 15 to 20 days. So you, however, this route does not offer any alternative options for several trains. Now you have to change that, but this time with a different method than before. Open the track construction mode and build a railway line from track two in Sacramento to track two in San Francisco. You will see that this track is automatically planned as a parallel track and is therefore very convenient. But two parallel tracks do not help yet. We still have to connect them. There is a very practical method for this, the station gridiron. With it, you can connect parallel tracks in front of stations. Select the station gridiron and build it in front of the Sacramento and San Francisco stations. Excellent. Now set different directions for the two parallel tracks so that the trains can avoid each other. Select the track direction mode again and set different directions for the two tracks by selecting the track sections. Excellent. By setting directions, all signals are automatically created here as well. Now your track is ready for more trains. Close the track construction mode and select the rail line from Sacramento to San Francisco. You can do this in several ways. First, you can simply select the train that is traveling between the two cities. Do that. You can also simply switch through all your rail lines. Try that too. And there is a third way. Select a track between San Francisco and Sacramento. Then, a list of all the rail lines that use this track will open on the left. You can also select the desired rail line from this list. Now select Edit Rail Line and increase the number of trains to two. The cost of this is for the locomotive, which has to be bought new. Fortunately, the wagons cost you nothing. Confirm the cost so the second train can be purchased and then close the mode. Perfect. Take a close look at the station and the station gridiron in Sacramento. The new train can be created immediately because thanks to the gridiron, both tracks are available to the rail line. The gridiron is more than just a crossover. While the train always chooses the shortest way at a crossover, at the gridiron, three tracks at the station are preferred. You can place gridirons at all parallel tracks in front of a station if there is enough space available, because the more tracks are to be connected, the longer the structure. Since the station gridiron can only be used by one train at a time, I wouldn't recommend you to connect more than four parallel tracks. Now let's wait for the train. And already the new train is on the way. By the way, 
The train number of the train you are currently looking at is shown above. Switch through the trains on your train line once. This is useful, for example, if you want to see what each train has loaded. And that's the end of this lesson. You now know how to create switches, side tracks, parallel tracks, track directions, and station gridirons. With this, you can already create any complex track system. You'll figure out other objects like crossings as you build tracks yourself. Welcome to my lesson on locomotive maintenance. First, you need to know that all locomotives have different maintenance intervals and consumption, depending on their type. Take a look at the rail line between Sacramento and San Francisco. Here you can see the current state of the locomotive. The lower the condition is, the more often the train has a breakdown and stops on the way. Locomotives are automatically repaired at stations if they have a maintenance depot. To do this, try choosing the station in Sacramento. Here you can select Construct Extension. Do that and take a look at the options available. Then build a maintenance depot. Very good! Whenever the state bar of a locomotive has dropped to about 60%, it will be serviced. And since the Sacramento station is used by both of your train lines, the maintenance depot also benefits both train lines. Now close the station again and select a train line once more. These three bars show the levels of water, sand, and oil. If operating materials are missing, the locomotive will be significantly slower. Water is needed on a daily basis. Sand is needed when going uphill to increase the friction of the wheels. Oil is needed to lubricate moving parts and the amount required is dependent upon the distance traveled. All of the operating materials that a locomotive requires can be obtained at supply towers, which must be built along the tracks. Open the building menu and select the supply tower. Now build a supply tower near each of the marked positions. Very good! Both rail lines can now reach a supply tower. You can build them at any position along your lines, but they should be far enough away from switches and stations so that a long train can stop at them without creating conflicts. There is one more building that has to do with maintenance, the maintenance post. Select this building type. Unlike the maintenance depot or the supply tower, the maintenance post is not a required building type. It is suitable, however, when many trains come together in a small space because the maintenance post can reduce breakdowns and thus long traffic jams and conflicts considerably. However, this also results in daily upkeep costs. This brings us to the end of this lesson. Feel free to look around some more. Once you have finished, this tutorial will end. This lesson is about optimizing rail lines, specifically how to optimize the revenue of a rail line according to its tasks. For this purpose, select a train of the rail line from Sacramento to San Francisco. Since this rail line operates between two cities, it transports passengers and mail. These two goods are among the express goods because they require fast transportation. Consequently, the faster the transport, the higher the transport revenue. For example, the faster you transport a passenger, the higher the ticket revenue. 
Now open the balance sheet of the rail line. Here you can see, among other information, what revenues the selected train had on its last full tour. As you can see, revenue for freight transportation also plays a role. While Sacramento produces meat, San Francisco has cloth. Fixed prices are paid for freight transportation, so speed is not a factor here. Now consider the cost. Maintenance and fuel are mainly affected by the length of a tour, but personnel generates daily cost, so speed plays a factor here. Also, a rail line can transport more if it is faster. However, freight is much, much heavier than express goods, and a locomotive cannot be fast and powerful at the same time. Therefore, there are different locomotives. For example, on this rail line, a mixed-use locomotive is used. This is always good if the load consists of at most half freight goods. If there is a higher percentage of freight, a freight locomotive would be better because the train will otherwise be very slow even on slight incline. We now want to test a freight locomotive and one for express goods between the two cities. Open the research and development section. Here you will see many technologies that you can unlock over the years. They improve countless aspects of your business. These include higher ticket prices, happier passengers, and even more modern locomotives. Your current locomotive is the Dunham. Select it and let's take a look at its data. Compare the speed, tractive power, and suitability of the Dunham with the two locomotives to the right of the Dunham, the Derwent and the Firefly. You can see that the fast Firefly has a much lower tractive power than the powerful Derwent. This means that the Firefly is much worse at pulling heavy loads, but much faster at pulling light loads. Now, unlock these two locomotives so you can use them in your rail line. Very good. Now close this dialog. Now optimize the rail line for express goods. Exchange the locomotive for the Firefly and select Express as the load type. Then, pay the costs for the new locomotives and close this dialog. Now, watch your rail line and use the fast forward function if you like. It will only pick up express goods and it will reach a much higher speed than before. After a while, it will even show the express symbol. This means your rail line is the fastest of its time and gets even higher ticket revenue. You don't have to offer an express line, of course. Everything works with slower and mixed transports as well. But suppose you have a good reason for this optimization. Then, of course, freight transport is missing. If you can't transport freight on the same tracks, that would slow down the express train. Therefore, you should expand the tracks from Sacramento to San Francisco. To do this, extend the two parallel tracks from Sacramento to San Francisco by two more tracks. Then build a station gridiron at each station, connecting each of the four tracks. You can just build the new station gridiron on top of the previous one, but be aware that the new gridiron is much longer. Don't forget the directions for the new tracks.
Excellent. Now create a new rail line from Sacramento to San Francisco. To make it use the new tracks, you need to set waypoints. To do this, select the following four objects in sequence. Sacramento, the outbound track, San Francisco, the return track. Very good. Now use the Derwent as the locomotive. Select freight to be loaded because this rail line should only carry freight. That's exactly how it's done. Normally trains always take the shortest way, but by using waypoints you can specify certain paths. You should also do this for your express line so that the two lines don't get in each other's way. Otherwise, we're through with this lesson, so when you're ready, you can finish it. Greetings! This lesson is about how you can recognize the needs of a city and use them to your advantage. I'll also show you how to invest in the production of goods to ensure additional transport and growing cities, which in turn leads to even more transport. Open the city dialog of Sacramento and then the supply and demand list. This list shows you, among other things, how high the stock of all goods is and how high the current demand by citizens and factories is. As an example, look at grain. The city needs grain, yet the supply is at zero. This is because the nearest grain farm is too far away and is virtually unsupplied by traditional transportation. The same is true for lumber. So with the help of new rail lines, we could improve the goods coverage of the city. For corn, however, there is some supply. Here, a corn farm is nearby and goods are transported via road. A new rail line would generate revenue, but would not improve the city's fulfillment of demand until the city has grown too large for traditional transportation. Now, close the list again and look for suitable businesses to improve the city's fulfillment of demand so that the city can grow. To the north of Sacramento, there is lumber, and in the northeast, there is grain available. Now build a station at both farms and connect them to Sacramento, preferably with double tracks and a gridiron.
forget to also set track directions and build supply towers. Then set up one rail line for each good so that they can be delivered to Sacramento. We will continue once the first goods arrive in Sacramento. Excellent. Select Sacramento again and watch how the city's fulfillment of demand improves. Since grain and lumber are in fairly high demand by the city, these two commodities also have a higher impact on demand coverage. Observe how the new supplies increase the goods coverage. If it's above 60%, a city grows. If it falls below 40%, it shrinks. Let's wait until the city reaches 40,000 citizens. We can look around a bit in the meantime.
Excellent. Sacramento has reached a new level. When a city grows, this has many effects. The need for goods increases, more types of goods are demanded, more industries can be constructed, and special buildings become available. Another industry can now be constructed in Sacramento. Beer would be good because grain is needed as raw material for it. Besides, San Francisco also needs beer and there already exists a rail line. So open the construction menu and select the breweries. Now place the new industry in Sacramento inside the inner city area. Make sure that the new building complex doesn't get in the way of your future construction projects. For example, you can't lay tracks through factory complexes. Very good! Now leave the construction menu again and select the new industry. Here you will see some info about your new industry. The rotating gear shows that the production is running. But if raw materials are missing or the export warehouse is overflowing, production stops. This decreases the utilization and consequently your profit. If the work stands still for a long time, you will also lose money. This can be the same city or any other city that can be reached by rail. So you can assume that your rail line to San Francisco will be used to transport beer. If one day the production of your industry is no longer adequate, you can enlarge it by increasing the level. This will also make your industry yield more profit, but you'll probably earn the most from transport of goods. Now select a rural business, because I'd like to show you that you can also buy this business. You can acquire any rural or city business as long as it is not owned by one of your competitors. This starts an auction in which all competitors can participate, and the highest bidder gets the business. Start an auction now. Very good. Now try to acquire this rural business. Excellent. One last thing. Open the flow of goods display. The origin of travelers, mail, and goods is displayed here, as well as where they are transported to. This is very useful if you're looking for a specific farm, for example, or want to know which transport routes you could take over. Down here, you will see explanations about the flow of goods. Now select different goods and move your focus to rural businesses and cities to see different information and the flow of goods. When you're ready, you can then exit this tutorial at any time. Hi! In this lesson, I want to explain how passengers, mail, and freight can change trains. This is useful because it means you need fewer rail lines and you can easily distribute goods from central stations to all directions. Now select Sacramento, and there, passengers and mail. Here you can see the destinations passengers and mail have from Sacramento. Right now, that's just San Francisco because it only mentions destinations that can be reached entirely by rail. However, this does not mean that these goods choose only direct connections.
Indeed, passengers and mail may change trains in cities and at rural stations with hotels if there is no shorter way and if the way by rail is at most twice as long as the direct way. Now, let's try this out. Now, build a station in Reading and connect the city to your station at the clearing. Feel free to use new tracks there. Then, create a new rail line that runs from the clearing to Reading. As soon as lumber arrives in Reading, we will continue. Outstanding! Now, so that the passengers and mail can change trains at the clearing, you need a hotel at the station. But you haven't researched it yet. Therefore, open the research diagram and unlock the hotel. Very good. Now select the station at the clearing and expand it with the hotel. Exactly. Now passengers and mail can change at the station. Open the overview, passengers and mail, in Sacramento again and you'll notice that passengers and mail can now get to Reading via the station with the hotel. Maybe it will take a while for the new route to be registered, then we'll just wait. Hotels, by the way, are only required at rural stations because in cities, passengers and mail can always change trains. Freight can also be transferred from one rail line to another at stations but there must always be a warehouse for this, because freight takes up a lot of space. Now let's try it out. For this, unlock the warehouse within the research diagram and expand the station at the clearing with the warehouse.
Unlike the hotel, the warehouse needs to be adjusted to the goods that are to be transferred here. Therefore, select the constructed warehouse and instruct it to take in the goods, meat, beer, and cloth. You don't have to specify a quantity. Very good. The goods selected by you can now change the rail line at the warehouse. Note, the goods in the warehouse do not belong to you because the warehouse only serves as a stopover for changing trains. All goods already have a fixed destination. As with travelers and mail, freight is only shipped by a business if the destination can be reached by rail. For example, the meat industry in Sacramento can now ship meat to Reading by rail, knowing that the meat will reach its destination via the warehouse. Now feel free to look at how the goods transfer at the clearing. You may also need to increase the number of trains to transport all the new goods. Then finish this chapter whenever at your own pace. Greetings. Now we'll move on to banks and personnel. Loans, stock trading, buying up competitors, personnel management, and sabotage. We'll start right away once you've opened the company dialogue. Here you can see some data about your company on the left and on the right side the current company value and how it's calculated. The results of the last four quarters are displayed here. The last quarter is on the left.
Here you can see which companies are currently competing in the transportation business and how much these companies are worth. Each company, including yours, is a public stock company that received its initial funds from shareholders. Therefore, you can buy your competitor's shares as well. Once you have acquired all the shares of a competitor, you can merge with them and the competitor disappears. But be careful. If a competitor gains value faster than you, they will also try to buy up the shares of your company and kick you out of the race. Buy some competitor's shares now. There is quite a bit more information about mergers, but you can take a look at that at your leisure by opening the tips and tricks section. Here you will find more information about each topic. If you open the tips from a dialog, you jump directly to the right place. Here you can buy shares of different markets and issue company bonds to take out a loan. The higher your company value, the higher the bonds value. Now buy some stock and issue a bond. In the last section, you can see all kinds of statistics and company developments. Look around a bit, then close the dialogue to continue. Now let's take a look at the personnel. Open the corresponding dialogue. In this dialog, you can change basic settings for the four different personal areas of your company. The first area is for the engineer. Your trains are on the move 24 hours a day. With a daily work time of 8 hours, each train needs three engineers. If you increase the work time, for example, you will need fewer engineers. But the quality of the work will decrease. How many of the available positions can actually be filled depends on how much you invest in your employees. How well each individual works and how many positions are filled ultimately determines the efficiency of an area. Efficient engineers, for example, reduce the maintenance requirements of your locomotives. Now take a look at the three other personnel areas. They all work similarly, but each has different effects. One special feature is your security personnel. Not only do they affect mail and freight revenues, but they can also prevent sabotage when effectively used. As always, you can find more information about personnel in the Tips and Tricks dialog. But now, let's turn to the last area, the saboteurs. You can invest money into searching for saboteurs to damage your competitor's business. The more money you invest, the faster you'll find more experienced saboteurs. Start the search for a saboteur now. Go ahead and invest the highest amount. Normally, you would have to wait for a while now, but I'll take the liberty to speed up the search. As soon as you have found a saboteur, you can use them. Now close the dialog and select something that belongs to your competitor north of Reading. For example, a station. Then, order the sabotage. That's how it's done. Whether you want to sabotage your competitors or not, of course, is your decision. 
It's not important, but you should expect that your competitors will not be squeamish with you. So make sure you have enough security personnel. That also brings this lesson to an end. One more thing. As long as your business is small, you don't necessarily need to worry about your staff. At some point, however, you'll have 50 or more employees in one area, and you'll incur significant costs. By then, you should optimize your staff. Well, there you go guys, that was all the tutorials and I have to say on the first impression basis I am positively surprised. I think they did a lot of good quality of light changes that make the game a bit more practical and less arcadish. I like how they changed uh, how, si how signals are pl uh, placed and uh, everything. It was but personally i like to to place signals and all that stuff but yeah it was a bit it was a bit cumbersome in the first one and buggy especially if if the laying of the tracks and everything so that's a good change and yeah now we have to see how it works out in the actual game um, so stay tuned i will play the campaign you can watch me play so thanks for watching please leave a like share comment what you think about the changes and maybe subscribe thanks for watching bye